How's it going, everybody? I'm glad you're here, and today we're going to be talking about Halloween Ends, directed by David Gordon Green and starring Jamie Lee Curtis. This is the third installment of the new Halloween trilogy that retconned all of the other sequels before the original, and follows the saga of Laurie Strode and Michael Myers coming to an end in the epic conclusion of the Halloween saga. So this video is not going to be replacing my daily Spooktober video. Um, that video will be up later today, but I literally just finished this movie. You can probably see my TV in the background. Like, I finished this movie minutes ago, and I needed to talk about it instantly. So the Spooktober video will be up today, but it'll be up a lot later than normal, just because I have so many thoughts about this movie. And this review is going to be a lot less structured than some of my normal reviews are, simply because um, I have no idea where to start. Usually when I see a movie, I'll like write down my thoughts before the review so I can have a bit of a structure, so I can have talking points. But this movie, um... I... what? It's a movie? I really don't know how I feel about it. I know that I like it more than Kills. I like it more than the last one, for sure. I don't know if I like it more than the first one or not, because... I only saw that movie in the theaters, and I haven't seen it since, but I remember enjoying myself, and this movie is very weird. First of all, I've never seen marketing for a movie this big lie this hard. Like, the trailers for this movie fucking lied to you about what this movie's about. Like, straight up, lied through their teeth. And I honestly respect that a lot, because everything that you've seen in the promotional material happens in the last... 20 to 25 minutes of this movie max. Everything before that you haven't seen a single scene from. They have not told us what this movie is about at all, so I'm not gonna say anything, but there's a lot that happens in this movie that has nothing to do with what the trailer shows you. <laughs> and again, I honestly respect it because I'm legitimately dumbfounded right now. I'm bamboozled. And it's strange because we've become so accustomed to trailers just spoiling everything when we watch them, so there's no surprises. But when a movie like this comes out that's so huge and the trailers straight up, again, lie through their teeth at you, you feel flabbergasted that you didn't expect to see what's coming. And that sucks that I'm this surprised to be surprised about a movie like this, because I feel like that's how every movie should be, but we've become so accustomed to trailers spoiling everything for us that the one time we get an extremely vague and disorienting one, we're dumbfounded as how to react. So, But that's, that's a topic for another day. Let's get back to the movie. Um, this movie is 111 minutes long, and it takes 40 for Michael Myers to even be seen, and it takes 94 out of 111 for the final confrontation with Laurie and Michael to start. Mind you, there's eight or so minutes of credits at the end of the movie. So minus eight from 111, that's what, 103? So let's just say 94 out of 103 minutes of this movie is nothing to do with L Laurie and Michael fighting. There's maybe five minutes of that at the end of this movie. <laughs> and everything that comes before that is so weird. And I don't even mean weird in a bad way, necessarily. There's a lot of bad things in this movie, but this movie reminds me a lot, strangely, of M. Night Shyamalan's Old from a couple years ago, because there's so many good ideas in this movie, and the execution on a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, is pretty weak. But I feel like I have more positive thoughts than negative overall, because again, this movie is so strange that I got an insane amount of enjoyment by just sitting back and admiring at how weird it actually was. And looking back on these films as a trilogy now, I can definitely see what David Gordon Green and company were trying to go for, and the themes that they were trying to explore, and the ideas that they were trying to convey, and all that stuff, but the scripts for these movies are not good, especially this one, because they're trying to tackle so much in this movie, and they have such little time to do it that even if you had someone like Steve Zalian writing the script, you probably couldn't make it work. <laughs> this film focuses a lot on Jamie Lee Curtis's granddaughter and her relationship with a certain character that I obviously won't get into in this video, but you do not care about these people at all and you're and you're with them for a large portion of this movie and what keeps you interested is the ideas that you can see the creative team trying to go for but if they didn't have these things this movie would be 
unwatchable because these characters are some of the blandest people that I've seen in a big blockbuster motion picture experience in a long time. There's nothing about them that's interesting. There's nothing about their dynamic that makes sense. They don't have chemistry with each other, but something about this movie kept me watching. And I, again, I can't quite figure out what it is yet. And it's really annoying that I can't put my finger on it, but it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments in this movie that genuinely made me, like, say something to the screen, which is rare. Like, especially something that happens in the opening scene, because I, I kind of knew the kind of the plot, but I didn't know everything. And when the plot kicks into gear, the thing that kicks the plot into gear is pretty friggin' crazy, and the way they present it is crazy. And again, the execution itself is very weak, but the thing itself is cool. Again, I'm being vague, but... I don't want to spoil anything about this movie to anybody because I think everybody just needs to watch it and bask in its absurdity. And again, I don't mean absurdity in the sense that there's crazy stuff like blood and guts and stuff flying everywhere. It's honestly quite the opposite. It's insane how tame this movie is for a while. The editing in this movie, I will say, is pretty bad, especially scene transitions. There's several scenes that end with something big and loud happening, and then for some weird dramatic effect, they'll smash cut to the next scene before what's happening is completed if that makes sense. And it's just very jarring and it's not presented well at all. There's movies where it does work, but this film just doesn't do it right. There's also a lot in the trailer that just isn't in the movie, like in the final 20 minutes. There's, there's the, all, everything you see in the trailer is from the last 20 to 25 minutes, but there's also quite a bit of stuff in the trailer that just isn't in the movie. Like the whole big soundbite moment where Jamie Lee Curtis is like, come and get me motherfucker. That's not in the movie. Um, there's a couple of individual shots in the trailer that aren't in the movie. The, the one shot that went viral on Twitter that was mimicking the 1978 shot of him in the shadows that had really bad lighting, that shot's not in the movie. But it doesn't feel out of place that they were removed, which is strange. I feel like they'd be more out of place if they were in the movie, given how the movie flows towards the end, because I really genuinely did like a lot of the stuff that they did in the last 20 to 25 minutes of this movie. The last 20 to 25 minutes of this movie is by far the best part, because... Michael Myers actually shows up, and a lot of the arcs that they were just kind of miscellaneously playing with throughout the first 90% of this movie, and honestly a little bit in Kills, actually come to fruition, and the intent behind what they were going for actually is revealed a little bit. Again, the, the execution is very sloppy, but once you finally see what they were going for, you can kind of appreciate it for the most part. The last 20 to 25 minutes of this movie is very different from the first part, and it's what I thought the entire movie was going to be, but given all the weird stuff that happens in the first 90 percent it kind of makes the last 20 to 25 minutes better than what i thought it was going to be i know this review is going to be shit but i i'm I, I again i don't know what i'm supposed to say the acting in this movie is pretty average honestly and a lot of that has to do with how bad the dialogue is in this movie because even jamie lee curtis she's obviously the best actor in the movie because it's it's jamie lee curtis i mean come on but the dialogue that's written for her is not very good so as a result her performance falters a bit at points and everybody else in this movie is pretty much just kind of there um performance wise because again characters you don't care about any of them um but i mean again it wasn't distractingly bad i don't know man this movie's weird I, i'm not gonna grade it I'll, I'll have to watch it again i'll watch it again through the rest of the movies like i'll watch all the movies and then i'll form a more defined opinion but i feel like i have more positive thoughts than negative there's a lot of bad in this movie there's a lot of bad but the kills the few kills that are in this movie are really cool there's there's a couple that are so unique and i was like damn they really went there there's some good effects too there's some really good makeup towards the end of this movie shockingly and David Gordon Green's direction is not bad. Like, he's, he's not a bad director. He's just... This movie's written by four different people. Two of them are, are honestly just kind of no-names. I don't, I don't know who they are. One of them is Danny McBride, who's too comedic of a performer and a writer to write something like a Halloween movie. And also the last writer is David Gordon Green, who's just not a good writer, period. I'm sorry. He's not a bad director, though. He's actually a quite good director. Because there's several parts in this movie where there's a directing choice made that seems bad in the in the moment and seems out of place in the moment and feels like why would you even put that there but then a few minutes later it actually justifies it and makes the entire movie better because of it which is a really cool touch and he does that a couple times in this movie and i was surprised by that yeah there's so much good in this movie and so much bad i have no this is such a varying film uh, again i'm not going to grade it but i'll watch it again and i'll probably update it on my letterbox i'm not going to make another video on it but yeah that's my th those are my thoughts on halloween ends 
Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry if this is your first impression of me. I'm normally a lot more concise than this. If you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe and ring the bell. If you've seen this crazy pseudo masterpiece of a movie, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys later today in the Spooktober video, probably. Yeah, that's gonna happen soon. Um, peace out. Yeah. Um, damn, this movie's weird. <laughs>